Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Greta and we talk about perfumes and some other luxury items here. If you're currently subscribed, thank you. I really appreciate your support. If you are not, please consider hitting the subscribe button and the notification bell so that you're alerted to my new uploads. It really makes a difference in the YouTube algorithm. It just, it, it allows me to be in more feeds if there's more subscribers. So thank you so much for that support. It, um, like I said, makes a huge difference in the algorithm. Like it's profound, the difference. So in any case, I'm gonna go over some more Zerge Off. I recently did a Zerge Off haul and the video got so long that I had to cut out four of these samples and just redo them and just splice it out because the video was really too long. I think I was up to 30 minutes and I was like, forget this, they're not even gonna be here for this. So I do have those four again that I'll go over and then two more that arrived today. So I'll try to get through these. One of them is a little more complex and deserves a little more attention, but um, and doesn't get much attention. So, but in any case, let's get to it. So the first one I'll do is these are pretty popular, the four that I got in samples. That's why I wanted to get my nose on them. The first one is Opera, which I really like. Um, I really like the opening. It's fresh and floral, but more mature or sophisticated, I should say. And, the, but it kind of, much like an opera, it goes through three acts. There's like three distinct periods this perfume goes through. And then I like the middle, it's very serious, but then the dry down gets very dark, it kind of goes into a darker and darker place. And much like the opera, a lot of them are very dra dramatic. I love the opera. It, it's, it just gets to a really dark, oud, prominent place that I just don't want now that it's springtime. I think this is something I'll revisit in the fall, winter and I'll get more use. It is something that I'm still intrigued by, um, but it's gonna go on the back burner. It just, I didn't realize it went that dark. It's very oud prominent at that dry down, and that's maybe 30 minutes in, if that. I could see maybe it being layered with something, but I just, um, it's just not what I'm into right now. The next one, I loved, and again, I know this is not gonna be a po very popular opinion because I love aldehydes and I know that's not popular. Um, but again, I also appreciate that aldehydes are, are almost like morphable. Like they're not the same all the time. You can't peg it, like say, well, this is what vanilla smells like. Well, actually even vanilla, like vanillas can be different. They can be a bourbon vanilla, a creamy vanilla, like a cotton candy kind of vanilla. Aldehydes can take on these different shapes, but even more. So people love to say Chanel number no. five. Oh, that's aldehydes. And it's not necessarily always the case. And that's why there's a big debate. This one is Picavaya Dama. And I love this one. And there's a big debate. Is it like Chanel number no. five or not? And anyone that appreciates aldehydes says, it, it will say, no, it does not smell like Chanel number no. five just because it has aldehydes in it. People say it smells like Chanel number no. five. I find it to be very refreshing. There is a soapy aspect to it, like caress soap uh, in the opening. It does settle down, but it has something very elegant about this and refreshing and daytime about it and very put together. Not like a violet cosmetic -y, but somebody that just really loves their body and bath products kind of person but clean, uh, it's more like maybe if you wanna go the Chanel number no. five route, like Chanel number no. five lay because it's lighter, it like pulls back a little bit. Um, but Chanel number no. five has all these other different elements in there. Like I just say, I'm, I'm not seeing Chanel, Chanel number no. five. It's not, there's a certain sparkliness about it, that kind of champagne sparkly effervescent kind of feel to it like that but it's just, this one's really beautiful. Very summer, clean, elegant. When you're put together and in a suit, but it's still the summer daytime, but you're not casual, you're in a white suit, say. I would think this. It's just, 
I really like this. Okay. And the next one is men's leaning. It's Neo, another popular one. But with people wanting to go shopping there, I thought I would do some of these. It's unisex, leans a little masculine. It's got the citrus, aromatic. It opens like everything else with bergamot and aroli and green notes. There's cardamom, which I don't get yet. I did just respray this because I couldn't remember. Pink pepper, jasmine, nutmeg in the middle. With a base note of vetiver, Virginia cedar, goyac wood, amber, and patchouli. And whenever there's vetiver, 75% of the time it goes way too masculine on me. It's just a note that kind of like ding, ding, ding. The alarms go off for me. It's very nice and clean. Wow, this is really good. I like clean, woody aromatics on a man. This is a wonderful everyday fragrance for a man if you like those classic kind of fragrances. Women could get away with this too. I would think summertime for something like this or after sports kind of a thing. Okay. And the next one is on my buy list. I happen to really like Violet and Iris. It's a softer, powdery fragrance. It has a top note of lemon, violet, and orange blossom. With all three very prevalent. The lemon is not like a screechy tart. It's more like a lemon cake. Lemon with the orange blossom and the violet. Very soft. And then you have a middle note of iris, white flowers, neroli, damask rose, in a base of vetiver, musk, cedar, and vanilla. And there's that vetiver, but I don't have that issue here. I can see the vetiver making this more unisex, but it has that softness, easygoing. And I think that violet in here lends it a little feminine. I just, I really like this. It keeps that soft powderiness to it. I, I really enjoy this and want to get that. So the next ones that came in the mail today, I got another one that is popular and it was a good price, so I got it blind, is Zerjov's Casamarati line, Fiori Dulivo. Dulivo. Fiori Dulivo. Olive blossom. That's what it means. The blossom of the olive. And I've never smelled olive blossoms, even though there's like olive trees here, but um, it's it really smells like olives. It's it's interesting. So to me, when I first sprayed it, I was like, you know, with that olive, almost like olive oil kind of smell. Um, I thought, gosh, this kind of reminds me a Mediterranean summer vacation. You've been in the sun, the Mediterranean sun. You come home, you shower, you've got some shimmery oil you're putting all over your body. You, you have these scents of the beach and the sun on your skin with some refreshing body products, nothing like haven't even put fragrance on. Then you've got this shimmer oil with that smell of the actual oil in there. And that's the vibe that I got here. And you're just going to a casual dinner and some linen outfit because I really get that olive oil. It's crazy. There's a little bit of a citrus at the top. It dries down and it almost gets like this honey kind of vibe. So there's, it opens with a Malfi lemon, lotus and basil, which I totally get that fresh Amalfi Coast kind of smell with ambrette, muskmallow. And then the middle note is olive blossom, magnolia, jasmine, in a base of musk, benzoin, and amber. But I really, really get the dominant olive blossom. This other stuff just kind of completes the picture is all it's really doing is just kind of building little facets around that olive blossom. It's crazy. It's, um, if you don't like the smell of olive oil with lemon in it, you, you might not like it. It's real, like, it's almost like dipping oil, right? With like your basil, your lemon, your little olive oil. Bring these little garlic in here. 
um, I need to dip some bread in here. It's, it's really neat, but I really consider it more of that like summer beach refreshing, definitely uni unisex, especially because of that whole aspect where it's really this olive blossom taking center stage. It's so cool because you don't really get that here. Now the last one was a blind buy that was really blind for me because it's not like I could smell it anywhere here. I didn't have samples. I looked for YouTube videos and there's a big void there on this. And even Fragrantica, there's only a handful of people and they, they quickly dismissed it because there is a very polarizing note in here that is not listed. So this is Fatal Charm. It just spoke to me, okay? I, it spoke to me and I just felt like I needed to give this one a try. And I'm really glad I did because if you just spray it, and you just smell that little tester strip. So what I did was I sprayed off part of the cardboard packaging and doused it and smelled it. And then took it with me on the treadmill, kind of stuck it in front of my fan. And then after the shower, I loaded up on it and I really got to go through the process with this. It's really complex, really. And it, that first five minutes, I, I smelled it and all I got was I got Iris and Anise. Now, Anise is not even listed here. Let me tell you what is listed. Top, uh, let's see, it says notes of powdery notes, aldehydes, orris root, floral notes, ambergris, spicy notes, and tobacco. I had to wonder if that was the same fragrance. I'm not joking. Like, it was, what? <laughs> that is not what I just smelled here. So it's, just like scratch that because, and I, I did get two other people's opinions here. Cause I'm like, wrong juice. So what I get at the opening is iris and anise, a very strong anise with the iris, powdery iris around it. And if you don't like anise, and anise is kind of licorice It's actually, you know, a vegetable out there and we take the bulb and we dice that up and put it in salads and it's really good. It's also good diced up like that as a digestive after a heavy Italian meal. Um, but people tend to equate it with licorice and licorice, black licorice is a lot harsher than anise. And it's just um, to think black jelly bean would be wrong, to be honest. But I'll say in that first blast, you might think that and be turned off because licorice can be very polarizing. Not everyone likes it, but it's a nice. And it then, if you give it 15 minutes, I was like, wow, this is amazing. This, then it reminded me of, I had to go pull it, the Lancome Iris Dragis, which is the one that's like Jordan almonds, where that is like an, a raw almond surrounded by a candy shell. This had that same candy shell smell, but it was like you had a little, a small amount of licorice candy, but I, I can't like think a tiny little touch of a, a black jelly bean because that would have that sugary kind of consistency to it than licorice. And you put that in a candy shell, but a small amount. Oh, you wait, isn't there a candy like that? What are those candies called? Oh, there's like good and, pl good and plenty. You get it at the movies, the little pink and white candies, right? So then I was like, okay, now this is addictive. Now that it's in this stage and the anise has pulled back and it's more of that violet in like a candy shell. Then I was like, okay, this is really good. Now I'm like addicted to this. Then I wore it, um, but it does go through this cooling sensation. It's really weird because there's no mint in there either. And I wouldn't say that. I'd say maybe it's from the anise where you're getting this cooling um, I've heard people say maybe metallic, but it's metallic in that it's that cold that a metal can give you, like that cold metals. It's really, it's cool. Like it's it's actually not like mentally, but that cooling sensation is if I had some kind of menthol on my body. I don't know how that came about, but it's crazy. And now I don't get the tobacco in here I don't get anything animalic in here. So I feel like 
this is this, I mean, the, the Zerjov house is so huge. It's so hard to really explore through all of it. But I feel like this one has kind of gotten forgotten. Like, I don't see any attention on Fatal Charm, and I really like this. It grew on me. I have to tell you, I was a little nervous the first five minutes. I thought, oh, oh dear Lord, what did I buy? What did I buy? What am I going to do? But I like it. I mean, I get like a respectable five hours out of this. It is not a beast. It's going to stay skin scent after a few hours, and you're just leaving this pleasant anise candy shell kind of vibe. But some, if you're wearing it, you get a little bit more of this journey, really, with this fragrance. I'm not a huge tobacco fan, so I can usually pick that out really easily because I don't like it too much, and I really don't get any tobacco. I honestly don't know where these notes that they're listing are coming from. I can say maybe, you know, maybe that's that comparison to high fashion, where high fashion, the runway has so many moving parts, so many people and teams and things and thought and preparation and everything that goes into this effortless 30 second runway walk where like, oh, it was just whimsical and they're barely wearing anything. What did it take to just drape that scarf and put a bikini bottom on on that girl? Like, but there's all this stuff that goes behind the scenes is kind of how I feel about this where the end result is very different from this, though some of all these pieces, like all these pieces create something very different because I get the powdery notes, I get the orris root, maybe a little bit of floral, and, but it's like tobacco, spicy, aldehydes. Where's the anise? Where's the anise in here? Like this is crazy, but in any case, that is six more Zerjoffs that I really wanted to cover for you. Um, I'm pretty happy. Again, I do want to pick up Ibitara and Pico Valladama. I've just been price hunting on them. We'll see if that's one of them that I use for um, my code with Demi. But I'm really happy. I, I think I have even more Zerjoffs to go over with you, to be honest. Maybe I'll grab them and do another part. Case. That is today's segment. Let me know what you think. Let me know if you have some of these. If you've tried them, let me know. And please, again, don't forget to hit the subscribe button and the notification bell. And I'll see you soon. Mwah.